Hello everyone and welcome to Math Eye at Home. I'm Megan and today we're going to be making some sun prints to celebrate an amazing and rare phenomenon that will happen next week, a solar eclipse. Have you heard about the solar eclipse that's happening on April 8th? Here in Michigan, we will see a nearly complete eclipse of the sun at around 2 to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And it won't happen again for a really long time, so you want to make sure that you try to see it. Just remember that if you're going to view the eclipse, you should make sure that you get a pair of these NASA-approved eclipse viewing glasses, like these ones here. Just like how you wouldn't want to stare into the sun on a normal day, this is still true during the solar eclipse. Although most of the sun will be blocked out by the moon, the corona will still be visible and could still do damage to your eyes or camera if you stare at it for a long time. A solar eclipse is a spectacular event where the moon moves in front of the sun and obscures it completely. But how and why does this happen? Everyone is probably pretty familiar with the fact that the sun rises in the morning and sets at night. This is because the Earth is constantly slowly spinning on its axis, causing our day and night cycle, even if you don't feel it. As the Earth spins on its axis, we're also doing a full orbit around the sun, which is at the center of our solar system. You probably also know that we usually see the moon during the nighttime and that the moon phases change as the nights pass. The moon actually doesn't produce any light by itself, but it appears illuminated in our night sky because it's reflecting the sun's light. It takes about a full month for us to experience the full moon cycle, starting from new moon, which means you don't see a moon in the sky at night, going through waxing crescent, through the full moon and then back through waning crescent until we reach new moon again. We see these different moon phases because the moon orbits around the earth just like the earth orbits around the sun. As the moon orbits the earth, we will see it from different angles, which means that we see different amounts of the light side of the moon which reflects the sun's light and appears bright to us. It doesn't happen often, but when the moon's orbit around the Earth syncs up perfectly with the Earth's orbit around the sun, the moon will temporarily move in front of the sun, casting parts of the Earth into the moon's shadow. If you're on a place on Earth that is covered by the moon's shadow, called the umbra, then you will experience a total solar eclipse. This means that you will see the moon block out the sun completely for just a minute or two. During the eclipse, the sun's corona, which is sort of like the sun's atmosphere, will still be visible as a ring of light around the moon, but the world will become almost as dark as it would at nighttime. For those of us here in Michigan, we are not directly in the moon's shadow, but just beside it. This means that we are in the penumbra. Even though we won't see a complete solar eclipse, we'll see nearly a 90 to 99% solar eclipse here in the southeastern Michigan area. That means it's still extremely exciting. For this craft, all you're going to need is some construction paper in various colors, although dark colors will likely work best. You might need some clear plastic wrap or a clear lid to a container, or maybe some tape. There's a lot of different ways to make this craft work. Finally, and this is the best part, you're also going to need some nature collections to place on top of your construction paper to make your sun print. I'm going to look for some fallen leaves, pine cones, dried flowers from last summer, or anything else that I find on the ground that looks cool. To make our sun prints, luckily there's very little work required. The sun does most of the work for us. So in order to make our sun prints, we just have to lay out our sheets of construction paper in the sun and place our nature collections on top of them however we want. The sun is going to bleach out the dyes in the construction paper, and so the shadows of these nature collections will create darker spots on the construction paper, preserving their shape and form. For me, since I'm at the Botanical Gardens, I was able to just place my construction paper in one of our greenhouses where they get direct sunlight but are protected from the wind and the rain. At home, you might want to wait until a nice day in order to do this craft or place your construction paper in front of a window that gets direct sunlight, like a south-facing window. Then lay out all of your materials the way you want. If you want to do this outside, you could also consider laying down a plastic lid on top of your construction paper. Just make sure it's clear and this will help keep your cuttings from blowing away. You could also tape them onto the paper and then tape the construction paper into a window. As you can see, I tried this with a lot of different colors of paper because I knew that not all of the dyes would react the same way and I wanted to see which dyes would work the best. 
Each construction paper brand will probably be different too. Since this is in the winter, I let my paper sit out for two or three days before I took the nature cuttings off of them to see how these worked. So you can see it's really hard in this lighting. There's a slight silhouette on this paper and then my green and purple didn't work at all. Something that happened is because I didn't secure the nature cuttings enough, they shifted around a little bit just by some natural airflow through the space. So I definitely recommend using something to secure your nature cuttings on the paper. I also learned that you'll get the best results using flatter objects because they'll create a more consistent shadow. For example, these pine cones I used, because they're three-dimensional, the shadow shifted throughout the day and so it doesn't create as crisp lines on the paper. My blue worked the best, as you'll see in a second, though I will say I wish I had made them more flush to the surface of the paper. Just because this would have made the shadows more consistent throughout the day and created a more crisper silhouette effect that I was going for. But that's okay! In order to really emphasize the leaf shapes of this, I decided to go back in and outline the leaf shapes with a pencil and then with a black pen, just so that I could get that overall look that I was going for. So why does this work? The sun is literally a giant ball of gas. It produces extremely high amounts of energy in the form of light. A lot of the light that the sun produces is visible, which is why it's able to brighten up our Earth like we see today. But some of the light from the sun is so high energy that it is off of the visible spectrum. This is called ultraviolet light, or otherwise known as UV light. The dyes in your construction paper are typically not stable enough to withstand prolonged exposure to UV rays, which means that over time the color will fade when they're in the presence of sunlight. So, after you've let your construction paper sit in the sun for a long time, it could be as short as many hours in the sun summertime when the sun's light hits us most directly, or it might take up to a few days in the winter like it did for me because the light that reaches us from the sun is less intense. So after your construction paper has sat out, you can then remove your nature collections from the paper, and you'll see how their shadows preserve the dyes in just specific areas on the construction paper, leaving behind an amazing silhouette. I hope that you enjoyed making sun prints with me today. And most of all, I hope that you get a chance to enjoy the amazing solar eclipse that we'll experience next week on April 8th, 2024. Because it may be a while before we get the chance to experience this again. Here on Earth, we are so grateful to the sun for providing us with warmth, light, and energy. We wouldn't be able to survive without it. As the weather gets warmer, it's really so nice to come out and enjoy the coming of spring on the trails here at Mathai. I've missed the warm weather all winter long. I hope that you come visit soon.